I believe that we're coming into a new consciousness and that that new consciousness is uh, is around the psychological dispensation and <clears throat> because if you take the psychological dispensation then all religions are true it's okay okay I don't mind and I'm not saying it's going to change in the next hundred years it may take a thousand years for all I know I'm it's just saying it just smacks of arguments that wars are going to cease forever and no no I'm not saying slavery anymore no know. no yeah I'm not saying that either I'm not I mean I'm not being so idealistic as saying that I'm only saying that we are coming into a new realization some people are Christianity brought belief but Edinger's point is and Nietzsche observed that by the end of the 19th century, God was dead in the belief sense, okay, that, that God started to fall out of heaven in 1500 with the quote-unquote enlightenment, which was science starting to punch holes in all the religious ideas. And this is where you get atheists now, okay, because atheists say well I have all these religious or I have all these scientific facts and there's no God up there I mean I was doing it too there's no God up there there's no hell down there there's no Satan there you know there's no hell like the like Dante's divine comedy I mean all that's nice act of imagination but it has nothing to do with the scientific reality the physical reality of the world. And, and so the epiphany I had when I read Answer to Job the first time, and this I did get out of it the first time, was that every religious statement of whatever kind is a statement of the psyche. It is not a statement of physical fact. Okay. Well, I can and, say that about every physical fact you make a statement. You know, well, and, and, and he would say, say that too, right? Yeah. He would say that too, and a lot of physicists, including Wolfgang Pauli, who was a Nobel laureate, would say exactly that. You can you can do things, but those are all mental. Those are all they're all in the psyche. Everything is in the psyche, and it's levels, right? It's different levels, understood. And and so the point that that. Young made is that it's all in the psyche, just as Bill says. So is that where, if the tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear, it, does it make a sound? Does that mean we have to be there to make things reality? It requires that's some that's basically what Jung said. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, look. If no if no one ever saw this, if no one ever saw this, did this ever happen? I mean, really, okay. And Jung's point was, he was in Africa once, and he went, up, he climbed up on this mountain by himself, and he looked up, out over this plateau, and there are all these animals, different herds of animals doing stuff, and birds doing stuff, and such. And he said, and that's the way it was for millions of years, millions and millions and millions of years, and. So therefore, it needs consciousness to exist. I mean, it's where, where this joke comes from, in a sense. It needs what Gibson calls consensual hallucination. In other words, well, you've got a shared representation. Okay, so, the, so there's this joke where the, two, the mama and baby dinosaur are there, right? And the baby says to the, di to the mama or dad, does God exist? And the big dinosaur says, not yet. Well, <laughs> right. And, and so this is, this is Edinger's and Jung's point, that God doesn't exist unless there's consciousness of God. And, and there was no consciousness of God until human beings came along. And any stretch of the imagination, it was just archetypal energy. Okay. And so this is where um, Harding with psychic energy and Neumann with, with uh, the origin and history of consciousness 
and then Edinger come in to explain what this is about, which is that, you know, it, it's in the conscious, it's in the psyche. And so your point, which Edinger said, was that the first level was the Jews, Judaism, came up with the law, the Ten Commandments, okay? And that was God. God was trying to control or structure human society, basically, is what he was doing, what was being done, okay? So the people wouldn't whip up on one another. Uh, they started to have marriage so that there would, to maybe cut down on, on the problems of men fighting over women or whatever it was at that time, right? That's why we have marriage, no doubt. Or to eliminate the competition. Right. Uh, yeah, and to eliminate fighting over it, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So it, it was a civilizing effect. So, so the law that Judaism brought in was one dispensation of the mystery of God. Okay, this is the mystery of God word. I'll call it, or the mystery of the God image. And then Christianity brought in belief, and that was the belief that God is good, summum bonum. Okay. God is all good, and Satan is all bad, and he's been sent off to um, hell, right? And But everything up there is good. And the problem with that was that in 1500, people started to look through telescopes and microscopes and that sort of stuff. And they started to say, ah, uh, where's heaven? You know, where's hell? And, and that developed more and more over the next 400 years until finally in, in seven or 1886 or so, Nietzsche writes Thus Spake Zarathustra and he says, God is dead. There is no such thing as God. Okay, in the physical world. He was talking about the physical world. But the reason he said God is dead is because he was saying that all these myths that Christianity was built up upon over, over 1900 years were not true. They were not true. And, and so humans' behavior had been organized, or at least in the West, it had been organized around this one perspective about God. It, was, you know, it developed differently in the East. But um, because, because that container, that psychic container, failed, we had the 20th century, which was full of these cataclysmic wars, and we're still suffering from that. And so we either have to pass into a new way of thinking about these things, or we're going to eliminate the species because now we have the power to do it. Okay, and maybe not only the species, but all life on Earth. Okay, and so. So we have to start thinking about it in a different way. And so I got it when I read paragraph 751 to 754, which I've read in this group before, where Jung says, you know, what people don't get is that I believe the psyche is real, okay? And that every religious statement of every kind is a statement of the psyche and not a statement of the physical world, not a statement of the physis. And because if it was a statement of the physis, it would be in the, in the books of natural science, which it's not. It's in belief, right? And so his point, which I, I rocked when I, got, when I got that far, was, oh my God, they're not talking about the reality of events that, that happened in the Bible. None of these religions are happening about the physical reality of 
any of this stuff in any religion. Nobody's talking about the physical reality. They're talking about a psychic reality. And th I got that, but I didn't get the point that Edinger then makes that this is the new dispensation of the mystery of the God image, okay? And the fact that we sitting here, we have no ideas of our own, okay? Any idea, anything you think doesn't come from your ego. It comes from the transpersonal self, okay? It doesn't come from your ego. You, you can't sit here and think up anything, okay? You can sit here and notice that an idea comes by, but it doesn't originate in your ego. It, it, right? 